How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and in my last video I talked about how Microsoft is developing the new version of their Edge browser based on Chromium, which unlike the name suggests is not the same as Google Chrome, but it's very similar. You see the Chromium project is basically a community project of an open source browser called Chromium. It was started by Google, but really anyone can contribute to it if they're allowed, and this includes Google developers. And the product of this project is Chromium. And you could kind of think of this as like a base version of a well-developed browser that any company can build on top of and that's what Google did with their Chrome browser. They helped create Chromium, which is like the base version, but then if someone wants to come along and make their own browser and add features on top of Chromium using that as a base, they can do that. So Chrome is built on top of Chromium. But that means that you don't have to run Google Chrome. You could indeed run the base version, just install Chromium by itself and use that as your browser. But what exactly are all the differences between Chromium and Chrome? And that's what this video is about. As a side note, you may have also heard of Chrome OS, which is an operating system used by Google in their Chromebooks. And yes, that is also built on a base operating system called Chromium OS. So there's the browser, and then actually there is a Chromium OS. We'll get to that at the end though. So going back to Chrome versus Chromium, what are the differences? Well, if you go and use Chromium, it's gonna look pretty much exactly the same as Google Chrome with very few differences. In fact, there's far more similarities than there are differences. Essentially, Chrome can do everything that Chromium can do, plus some features that were added by Google that are exclusive to Chrome. So the main difference is that Chrome has more features than Chromium, and that's what we're gonna go over basically. What are these differences in features that Chrome has that Chromium doesn't have, and are they really even a big deal? One of the biggest differences is the codecs built into the browsers. Now, Chrome actually has licenses for a lot of proprietary codecs, including AAC, H.264, and MP3. And obviously H.264 and MP3 are extremely popular, so it's kind of important that it can play those videos on the web. However, both browsers have built-in codecs for free formats, such as OGG, Vorbis, OGG, or VP8, VP9, and Wave. So if you are using Chromium exclusively, then those more popular proprietary codecs might present a problem. And I believe YouTube even uses H.264, but I'm not sure if that means that you wouldn't be able to watch videos at all if it's not using the VP9 codec. So you might run into problems or you might just have to install the codec yourself. I'm not really sure what that would entail. Just be aware of that. Now the next difference has to do with Adobe Flash, which obviously is being phased out in favor of HTML5, but it is still used occasionally Occasionally. And Google Chrome has a built-in plugin that uses a special version of the Flash API called PP API, which does not stand for Pen Pineapple Apple Pen, unfortunately. It actually stands for Pepper Plugin API, which is basically a special piece of software developed by Google that makes Adobe Flash a little bit more secure. But if you are running Chromium, then you can't use that specific plugin. You have to use kind of like the default one, which is available if you download off of the Adobe website, I believe, which is NP API. That one stands for Netscape Plugin API, and just by the name, I think you can understand how old and ancient that is. Netscape has not been around forever, so I don't think it is based on that same code anymore, but it uses the same name. So if you're using Chromium, you basically have to use the older NP API, and one thing to note is that if you're using Linux, then Chrome is basically the only way to get the more modern versions of Adobe Flash because it has that built-in Pepper plugin API which uses the latest versions, whereas the NP API might use older versions, is what, which is what you would have to use if you're doing Chromium on Linux. These aren't necessarily something you would even really notice, but it's a difference video, so I have to talk about it. One very obvious difference is that Google Chrome has automatic updates using Google Updater, whereas Chromium actually does not. You have to manually update it. The only exception is on Linux. Linux has usually its own package managers that will install updates for you. But if you are running on Windows and you want to update Chromium, I believe that means you have to like manually check for it or manually download and install it again. The next difference is extension restrictions. So Google Chrome will only allow you by default to install extensions from the Chrome Web Store. Now that's kind of understandable because really there's not many other places you would even bother going. Pretty much every extension is made for Google Chrome and will be on that 
web store. So it's not really a big loss, but if you are using Chromium, you can install from the Chrome web store or any other location you can find them. However, I do believe even if you are using Google Chrome, you can get around that by installing or enabling developer mode rather. And I think then you can like manually load the packages. It's a little bit more work, but I'm sure it can be done. And really considering the target audience of Google Chrome, I think it's actually a good thing. You know, if they allowed you to install plugins from anywhere, then it would just be like virus city and so many people would exploit that. Up next, another difference is crash and error reporting and statistics. This one's pretty self-explanatory. If you're running Google Chrome, it has automatically enabled the ability to basically take information about any crashes and will send it to Google, which is supposedly being used to improve the software, which is true, but if you're super privacy conscious, maybe you don't want it collecting statistics and sending it to Google for usage, then Chromium is probably the better option. Moving on, we have the sandbox. Now this is a feature that is in both Chromium and Chrome, and a sandbox is basically just like a ability to encapsulate code running. So if it's on a website, it prevents it from kind of leaking out and affecting other programs or web pages, which is especially helpful if there's like malicious software running out on a website. And basically the sandbox is always on on Google Chrome. I don't even think you can disable it. Whereas on Chromium, I think it's by default gonna be enabled in most cases, but there are some distributions of Linux or the Chromium browser where it might not be enabled by default. So that is something to be aware of. You probably want this to be running. And finally, this one's not gonna be surprising, is that Google Chrome has more integrations with the Google API. So you can actually log into Chromium and Google Chrome using your Google account, but I believe that Chrome probably has a lot more integrations with your Google account than Chromium will, understandably, but that also means they're probably gonna be collecting a little bit more information about it. So which one should you use then? I think for most people, Chrome is the one to use. Chromium is just more gonna be for people who are either extremely privacy conscious or extremely distrustful of Google, or they just want to run open source software and know exactly what they're running on their uh, operating system. A lot of people using Linux are very enthusiastic about running open source software only, and they'd rather go with Chromium because you know they can audit the code themselves if they want. And one real example of this is that Google Chrome actually does apparently create a unique token for every browser installation called an RLZ, which will basically track information about your browser usage. They say it's has no personalization information, so it's kind of like anonymized, but you gotta wonder how true that is, whereas Chromium theoretically would not have that. So if you are using Chrome, you basically are being tracked, it's supposedly anonymized, but you might not like that. Now, towards the beginning of the video, I did mention how there's Chrome OS, which is built on Chromium OS. So just like the browser Chromium, there's actually the operating system Chromium. And there are a few differences, and similar to Chrome versus Chromium, pretty much the major differences are that Chrome OS has more features than Chromium that are added on. So one example of this are some additional firmware features, such as verified boot, which is a feature in Chrome OS which basically is just going to allow to verify different hardware and stuff like that that are booting on the computer, and I don't believe Chromium has that. Also, Chrome OS is optimized for certain types of hardware, so obviously there's Chromebooks, and there's only a limited number of them, so Google can go in and perhaps add some different modifications to the code to optimize it for specific hardware builds, whereas if you're running Chromium OS, you could install that on whatever you want, and you can do the same for Chrome OS, but Google knows what hardware is definitely gonna be running Chrome OS so they can optimize it for that. Also auto updates, Chrome OS has it, Chromium does not. And Chrome OS also does have some additional software packages such as Adobe Flash. You also have some like cellular data connectivity, I believe, although I think Chromium might be adding that. And finally, another big one is that Chrome OS has a Android app container, so you can actually run Android apps on Chrome OS, and I don't believe that is a feature on Chromium. There might be a, some other small features that I'm not really gonna bother mentioning, but in any case, the summary is that, again, Chrome OS has a few more features than Chromium, but you can just go install Chromium OS if you want as an operating system. So those are the differences. If you didn't know Chromium existed before, then you might be thinking, eh, I'm just gonna stick with Chrome, or maybe you wanna be like a hipster and tell all your friends how you don't run Google Chrome, you run the 
Chromium version, open source, and brag to them about that, but I don't know. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here, including the one about Microsoft Edge. I talked about that last time. If you want to subscribe, I make a couple videos a week, so it should be worth it. So again, thanks for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you down in the comments. Have a good one.